Okay, everybody calm down. You can have a big brain, but like a small head, which I don't even have a small head, okay? I don't have a small head. I just have a normal size head. I'm saying it. All right, let's do it. Does IQ actually, what does IQ actually measure? Before we get started, you guys know my takes on IQ. Talked about it quite frequently. This is a video from Veritasium, so I believe it'll be great. Um, the only thing that IQ measures is how fucking stupid you are. And not for the reasons that you think I mean. What do I mean by this? You're not the smartest person if you believe that IQ is a decent metric of intelligence or a decent measure for how successful you will be in society. That's it. It measures pretty much nothing other than how good you are at taking an IQ test. Precisely the reason why only the worst people love talking about how they're Mensa or how they have very high IQs. Uh, it's really funny if you also put it on your like social media profile or something. All right. IQ is everywhere. Do IQ exams do that? You probably need 120 points of IQ. Don't know what my IQ is. IQ. 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 Low IQ individual. People who boast about their IQ are losers. True. When people say IQ, what they mean is intelligence, an objective, rigorous measurement of intellectual ability. But does it actually work? Eh? Well, in this video, I want to find out where IQ came from, what does it actually measure, what can it predict about your life, and I guess, what is my IQ? I have never taken an official IQ test before. Honestly, I don't think I'm terribly smart. I've always kind of considered my IQ to be maybe just a little above average. Exothermic or endothermic? I feel like that should be exothermic. Good job, science guy. <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, come on, dog. He said, maybe my IQ is a little above average. Come okay, well, anyway, you're going to have to really let him cook. I'm about to cook him if he keeps up this, this take about uh, IQ. There are a lot of IQ tests online, but I am very skeptical about their accuracy. Okay, that's smart. See? Okay, points for smart guy points. Still, I figured some of them may be good practice. Is this your first reaction to React Gate 2023? <laughs> no. Man, what do you mean? Of course it's not my fucking first react. I've been reacting every day. I haven't stopped reacting at all. Literally have not stopped, including the entire day. And will most likely not stop. Just for the real thing. Tomorrow, I'm going to do an IQ test for real. Before I do that, I want to try to improve my score. And so I'm going to try to do a whole bunch of practice tests. Also smart. I think this test is trainable. But tomorrow we're gonna see whether that's true or not. Also smart. The idea Double of intelligence testing goes back hundreds of years. But the first concrete breakthrough occurred in 1904. English psychologist Charles Spearman was studying students' grades in different subjects. And he wondered how their performance in one subject, like English, would relate to their performance in another, like math. One option would be that the better a student did in math, the worse they would do in English, maybe because they spent more time on their math work and so had less time to devote to English. So performance in different subjects would be negatively correlated. Another option was that performance in one subject would be completely unrelated to performance in another. After all, different subjects require different skill sets, so maybe marks would be totally uncorrelated. The third option was that the better a student did in math, the better they would do in English. In other words, their marks would be positively correlated. A correlation coefficient can vary anywhere from negative one to positive one. A correlation coefficient of negative one indicates a perfect negative correlation, meaning an increase in one variable corresponds to a precise, predictable decrease in the other variable. Similarly, a correlation of positive one indicates a perfect positive correlation. A correlation of zero indicates no relationship between the two variables, and any value between zero and- I know my ass is low IQ because I looked at this and I didn't understand. I didn't retain any of this shit. One indicates a positive correlation, but the data has some random spread. 
The square of the correlation coefficient tells you the amount of variation Politics, in Politics, Andy, it's statistics. I should be fucking good at this. I'm not. <laughs> what do you mean? I quite literally should be good at that. I'm not, okay? Politics, Andy, this is right in my wheelhouse, supposedly. One variable that can be explained by variation in the other variable. For example, if the correlation coefficient is 0.5, then 25% of the variation in one variable can this is be why explained I bully nerds. by the other. When that... Spearman analyzed his data, he found a clear positive correlation. Students who did better in math also tended to do better in English, and the correlation coefficient was 0.64. It's kind of an interesting correlation to find because I feel like there would be a, a, an absolute negative association with doing well in math versus song getting cooked by a Zandau 70-year-old psychiatrist in a debate. Wait, what? Man, I think in a lot of instances, some of you guys maybe take what I say a little too seriously, okay? Calm down. You only likes politics when it's drama, Andy. Don't lie, homie. Yeah, that's... <laughs> yeah, that's why... That's why I cover it every day when there's like incredibly and profoundly boring shit happening by every objective measure. Not because of my fixation and, and obsession with politics, but certainly, certainly because I love drama. Like the drama surrounding the debt ceiling. Oh man, the drama. <laughs> I love covering the, the drama surrounding the debt ceiling for three and a half weeks. Every day. But math and English weren't the only subjects the students studied. They also took classics and French. And when Spearman looked at the correlations between all of these subjects, he found the same pattern. Students who did well in one subject tended to do well in them all. So how do you explain this observation? Well, Spearman proposed that each person has some level of general intelligence, what he called the G factor. This construct was meant to capture how quickly students could learn new material, recognize patterns, and think critically regardless of the subject matter, which explains why students' scores across subjects are correlated. Those with high G score well on all subjects, and those with low G score poorly on all subjects. Spearman published his conclusions in a paper titled General Intelligence Objectively Determined and Measured. But the correlations weren't perfect, so on top of the G factor, Spearman proposed subject-specific factors, or S factors. A student's performance in math, for example, would depend on their general intelligence plus their subject-specific factor for math. The G factor is the geek factor, okay? The better you do in this, the higher the likelihood that you're going to be shoved into a fucking locker. Subject-specific factors could increase or decrease performance on that particular subject. Spearman believed that specific factors could be trained, but general intelligence was fixed. So he wanted to find a way to reliably measure general intelligence. At around the same time... You are so bully-coded for someone who used to get bullied. Yeah, I mean, why do you think I'm joking about it? Okay, shut up, nerd. I'm in France. Alfred Binet was tasked with figuring out Don't put your which glasses kids on needed to see, more help nerd. in school. Together with Theodore Simone, he developed the Binet-Simone test. Students were asked to name what's missing in the drawing, define abstract ha! terms, and repeat back sentences. And there was also this question asking which face is prettiest. <laughs> there were 30 dude, tasks in dude, all. Dude, the greatest, the most French intelligence test you can have. Which one would you be la racist to? Also, the correct answer is two. In the eyes of Frenchmen, it's two. They're like, ah, look at the nose. It's very well defined. Just like my favorite, uh, Gerard Depardieu. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. What do you mean? He's got le schnoz. It means uh, powerful. Now they need a question about cigarettes. Yeah, which, which, which cigarette would you consume and why is it both of the cigarettes? Their performance was benchmarked against other students of different ages in order to assign them a mental age. For example, if a student performed about as well as the average eight-year-old, their mental age would be eight. This mental age was then divided by their actual age and multiplied by 100 to arrive at a so-called intelligence quotient. And IQ was born. 
So the Binet Simone test was the world's first IQ test. It was translated by Goddard into English and brought to the US. At Stanford, Lewis Terman standardized it using a large American sample. And with some modifications, it became the Stanford Binet test. And for decades, French people discussing the mental age of children. I didn't say it. I read it from the chatter. Okay. I have squashed my beef with the Frenchman. I love my French friends. Okay. I didn't say that a chatter did, but low key, they are very bad at prosecuting pedophiles. Like I, this is what I've heard from Frenchmen. Okay. From French people. I'm not even kidding. It was the most widely used test in the United States. But this was just the start. Kai, oh, Many shit, other that? IQ tests were developed. What are you doing? They all had the same goal what are you doing? of measuring the G factor. The way they did this was by assessing many different mental abilities, including memory, verbal, spatial, and numerical skills. Each one of these areas might have a subject specific shift, but by averaging them all together, the idea was the subject specific effects would cancel out, leaving a decent approximation of G. Of course, there would always be some error, but that's why psychologists designed IQ tests with upwards of seven to 10 sections with distinct tasks to try to minimize subject specific distortions. All the different IQ tests differed in the number of questions and their difficulty. So to standardize the scoring system, each test was given to a large sample of the population. Raw scores were normalized, usually so the mean was 100 and the standard deviation was 15. And that's how it's still done to this day. This is known as IQ and it's meant to be a measure of an individual's G factor in comparison to the rest of the population. The way it's scaled, 68% of people have an IQ between 85 and 115. Only around 2% score over 130 or under 70. 11 lions, 4 cats, and 7 crows have a total of... Oh, boy. As I was studying for my IQ test, I practiced all the different types of questions don't that smell. appear my don't on smell modern that. tests. One section will almost certainly be on vocabulary. This is they good. give you one word. This is good because I'm going to train for an IQ test. Word, like sanguine, and you have to pick which of the multiple choice options is most similar in meaning. Is it gloomy, asinine, recalcitrant, optimistic, or reflective. They might also ask you to pick a word with the opposite meaning. I, isn't it? So what is the opposite of perspicacious? Is it canny? <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, first of all, if you're ESL, you're like cooked. <laughs> Automatically, you're like, oh yeah, by the way, uh, immediately, immediately, if you know two languages, well, I mean, I guess like there's a lot of fucking uh, uh, dummies in America as well, but like, automatically you're just like oh okay well i guess sorry i only know fucking two languages fluently i'm pretty sure i'm in some documentary because i smoke weed before an mri during an extended iq test what <laughs> how much pollution were you exposed to as a child should be a factor in these tests before we take them seriously at all no i think that that's not valid because then you're talking about environmental factors like environmental racism and whatnot but like that can contribute to your uh, you're, you're, you having like a learning disability or something, but having said that, I think the better thing to do is tackle the, the boundaries that the test itself finds as a, uh, as a, as a good, decent measure of intellect and attack that instead. Cause what you're saying isn't wrong. In my environmental factors absolutely factor in, but I also don't think that this test is a good way to figure out whether you're an intelligent person or not. Does that make sense? Obsequious, dull, fanciful, or sagacious. What the fuck is sagacious? Another section tests your ability to spot patterns with numbers. So pick the number that best completes the pattern. Three, five, eight, 12, what comes next? 
Originally, I was looking for complicated patterns, but as I familiarized myself with the online tests, uh, I discovered four, 16. The patterns were usually a. pretty simple. The answer is a. a good technique is uh, to find. Oh, uh, it's a. It's a, right? Isn't it? It's three plus two equals five. Five plus uh, three equals eight. Eight plus four equals twelve. So then, twelve plus five. Seventeen. Oh my God! Wait, did I say a? Fuck! Ah! I meant seventeen. Fuck! Okay, I failed. I failed. I failed already. God damn it! Oh, I just got a, low, a loud environment warning. I've already failed. Fuck! Can't do math? Yeah. Low IQ loser, Lamal. <laughs> I know, I fucked up. Your boy got... Your boy maxed out on his math, by the way. The only reason why I got any fucking scholarships whatsoever was because I... I... I maxed out on my math. And I aced my Calc 1. And I think, yeah, Calc 2 as well, uh, which is the only reason why I got a 2.9 at University of Miami. It would have been way lower. And then I never looked back, never touched math ever again. And okay. the difference between adjacent terms. So in this case, the first two terms are separated by 2, the next Ooh, by 3, and then 4. So the logical next term should be 5 more than 12, so 17. The answer is C. Sometimes the numbers grow rapidly, like in the sequence 3, 15, 60, 180, what comes next? In cases like this, I look at the ratio of one number to the one before it. In this case, the second number is five times the first. Uh, honestly, I believe you did really well in math because of how you described needing to continue practicing to stay sharp. Yeah, uh, math is not like riding a bike. Or I guess maybe it could be like riding a bike. I don't know. I've never gone back to it. But you, but the only reason why I was good at math is because in Turkey, you learn Calc 2. It's like a part of like the regular curriculum, Calc 2, in high school. And not only that, but also we're never allowed to use calculators. So like you had to have, you had to have that shit drilled into your fucking brain. Hey, stop licking my leg, you weirdo. Why? It's, I know I'm sweaty. I'm sweaty. Stop it. She's looking at me like I'm a chew toy, dude. The next number is four times. And you, you said 12 plus five is 16. Okay, shut up. Yeah, I was wrong. Times bigger. And the next one is three times larger. So the answer should be two times the fourth term, which is 360. Answer B. One of the best-known types of IQ test questions are Raven's progressive matrices. These involve a 3x3 three three grid with symbols in each of the cells. And you have to select the ninth cell which follows the pattern. I found that the bulk of these puzzles obey one of only a few different logical rules. One is translational motion, so the symbols move from one cell to the next in a predictable fashion. The second is rotational motion. One or several objects rotate from one cell to the next. The third is missing symbols, where in each row or column, each symbol- Fuck, I, I missed it. I'm sorry. I was- Dude, this is why I would never fucking do well in a goddamn IQ test, okay? Holy shit. Immediately, he's like describing this. I care about it. I want to I wanna do better. I already said like, oh yeah, I'm going to take an IQ test. I'm learning. And like, I literally forgot- like, after the first math thing, I was like, all right, uh, uh, okay, got it. That piqued my interest. The math one was fun. 160. Answer B. One of the best-known types of IQ test questions are Raven's progressive matrices. These involve a 3x3 three three grid okay. with symbols in each of the cells. Okay, and You have all to right. select the ninth cell, which follows the pattern. What? I found... Fuck! What is... It? What? What do you mean? What? Oh, I have no idea. What does that mean? Why would it be that way? What? Everyone is saying, see, y'all just watch the video, you fucking jackasses. You just watch the video. No, you dumbass. Just look at the pattern. Like what? I don't get it. Now I know IQ is real. Low, middle, high, down the left row. The answer is Napoleon. Look at the pattern as you move left to right. What? It's getting closer to the to the right side. It w so what? I don't get it. So? How am I supposed to infer that? It's not... Dude, okay, I'm not taking the IQ test, dude. <laughs> 
found that the bulk of these puzzles obey one of only a few different logical rules. One is translational motion, so the symbols move from one cell to the next in a predictable fashion. The second is rotational motion. One or several objects rotate from one cell to the next. Oh, I hate this! The third is missing symbols. I fucking hate this! Watch out, Kaya. I'm so bad. I'm so fucking bad at this, dude. I, this is... Okay, okay. The previous one is whatever. Memes, jokes, who cares? I am so physically incapable of doing this. I am so bad at this. Like, it's, it's literally... It's virtually impossible for me to do this. It's not impossible, but it takes a long ass time for me to do it. You spin me right round, baby, right round. Okay. E. Did I get it right? Please say I got it right. No. How many spins? No. Did I get it right? No, I didn't. Fuck. No. No. Rory V, thank you for the 50 gifted subs. This y'all streamer? Being bad at that means you have a woman's brain? Dude, call me the sexiest woman on the planet then because I have the most feminine mind you've ever seen. Your whole ass will be dead the first round of the squid game? Yeah, 100%. It's E, 90 degree rotation of a circle. Wait, was I right? I said E. Is, no, everyone's saying A. Symbols, where in each row... Missing symbols. What? Isn't it just a star? Like, what, what is the... This is, conf, this is... This is what I mean. It feels like it's too simple. It's like a, it's like a mini star, right? So it would be D. I, this, okay, some of these are, like, really stupid. It's a mirror of what the triangle is doing, but with the star? Wait, why is this one infinitely easier for my brain than this oh, one, then? Because, the like, this one is actually hard. I am so bad at this. I'm so bad at rotational motion. I'm, like, actually bad. I'm not memeing, but missing symbols is super easy. They're all really stupid. You're just overthinking the other column. Each symbol appears once. So to figure out which symbols appear in the final cell, you just have to spot which ones are missing. And the fourth is addition, where the first cell plus the second cell equals the third cell. What the fuck? What? I'm so confused. Maybe you have aphantasia? No. The triangle one is full of useless information. Yeah, I think, like, maybe I just pay attention to all the dumbest shit. This is why your brother's a rocket scientist and you're a fucking macaroni brained 410 ding dong. <laughs> Marat would cook me, dude. He has, he has mega autism. What do you mean? He would fucking eviscerate me with this. What are you talking about? He builds fucking spaceships. Are you insane? There's no question. Think about the level of autism you need to have to be able to recognize that at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. Many of you don't even have that level of autism. Can he say that? Murat would be insulted if you asked him to do these kitty puzzles. No, I don't know. I think he would, like, maybe pressure would get to him, potentially. You know what I mean? Here's the three-minute ad break now. Fear and IQ would be such a content, except for Austin somehow getting a 160. Yeah, let's go. 9.19. That's a great rating. Okay, so addition is what? In this case... Oh, it's like subtracting or subtracting. Um, so wait, what the fuck? Subtracting. Lines that overlap cancel out, but a line plus nothing equals a line. Okay, I hate that. I fucking hate that. I hate that so much. In most modern IQ tests, all the questions are completed under time pressure. You may have only around 10 to 30 seconds per yeah, question. Yeah, I would get cooked on that. Okay, this morning I'm taking an official IQ test, and I gotta say that I'm pretty nervous. I always want to do well on tests. You know, it's something I pride myself on. Nerd! But at the same time, you know, uh, who knows how this is gonna go. I'm not allowed to take you in there because obviously people don't want the questions getting out and they don't even want video of what it looks like in there. You know, they're very strict about these things. So I'm gonna go in. Nah, he's just like, he's just scared that, you know, 
his results are going to look bad. Like, he's going to look bad. That's why. He's just scared. It's okay. The test, I'll come out, and I'll let you know how it went. Wish me luck. What's remarkable about IQ tests is that an hour or two of questions on vocabulary, numbers, and arbitrary shapes can predict a surprising amount about your life. I fucking hate, oh God, that's like hurting my brain. Even looking at like IQ test B-roll is hurting my brain. I walked into an IQ test center with a pirate's hat on and they instantly failed me. For one thing, the higher your IQ, the larger your brain is likely to be. A large meta-analysis from 2005 estimated a correlation of 0.33 between IQ and brain size. So high IQ is literally big brain. IQ is also predictive of school success. In 2007, Scottish psychiatrist Ian Deary measured the IQ- Okay, everybody calm down. You can have a big brain, but like a small head, which I don't even have a small head, okay? I don't have a small head. I just have a normal size head. It just looks small because my fucking shoulders are so muscular and gigantic. Uh, fuck you. Cues of 13,000 11 year olds. And five years later, when these students completed national school examinations, Deary compared their exam marks to their IQs. Their performance on an IQ test when they were 11 correlated with their. I love chatters being like, yeah, you have a small head, which means you have a small brain. Okay, then Charlie Kirk is a fucking genius. Is that what you're trying to say? Sebastian Gorka, Sean Hannity, some of the smartest people you know. <laughs> performance five years later on the GCSEs, uh, about 0.8. That's an extremely high uh, correlation. It means about two- Trainwrecks is the smartest motherfucker you've ever seen in your life. Two thirds Peyton of the variation in national school examination scores could be predicted by IQ tests taken five years prior. Now, the correlation coefficient of this study is at the high end of the 0.2 to 0.8 range found in similar studies, but research supports the claim that IQ is a good predictor of school success. It also predicts how much schooling a person will complete. Maybe this shouldn't be so surprising, since some school tests are essentially IQ tests. Yeah, there's a, there's a school for, like, the gifted Merman Academy. Los Angeles is really, really, really fucked up with private schooling. They have some incredible institutions, but they are so awful. Like from the jump, from kindergarten, you're like dropping 100K if you want to go to private school. And, and basically, some of them, Merman Academy, literally requires you to take an IQ test at the age of like seven or something. It's been argued that tests like the SAT, ACT, and the GRE are basically IQ tests. They correlate with standard IQ tests at around 0.8. Now on my SATs, I got a score of 1330, which corresponds to an IQ of around 130. So it'll be interesting to see if my official IQ score matches that, or if I was able to increase my score by familiarizing myself with IQ style questions. They're using did well in schools a measure Le Mafeo. Think about that. Yeah, I know. Let me tell you something. I graduated with fucking honors and I'm an absolute idiot. Okay. That don't mean shit. I literally graduated with fucking a 375. Okay, and I'm an absolute moron, a baboon, if you will. So that don't mean shit. I don't know. But IQ also has predictive power outside of school. One of the most robust findings is that IQ can predict job success. Particularly in technical or high complexity jobs. How do you measure occupational success? Uh, you ask people's bosses to rate them. Uh, uh, you ask what people's income is. You measure productivity in ways that economists use about, you know, the output generated. The correlations typically range from 0.2 to 0.6, and the effect is most notable for more complex jobs, which makes sense. The highest effect is for military training. In Only people who graduate with honors say they don't matter? Brother, what are you talking about? I stream on Twitch. I got zero fucking good jobs out of college. Like, literally, I had to work with my uncle on his fucking media startup. You understand me? On a completely unrelated job to all the information that I was supposed to retain. It's, it's completely ridiculous. In fact, the U.S. military will not accept anyone with an IQ under 80. They also limit to 20% the number of recruits with IQs between 81 and 92. I was about to say, that's a 
That's the biggest cap I've ever fucking heard in my entire life. Let me tell you something. I believe in the top. I believe in like uh, the military being like, no, 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 your IQ is too high. Even though I don't think the the IQ is a decent metric for 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 intelligence or success or anything like that. But I 100% do not believe that. The Marine Corps exists. Are you fucking kidding me? They max out at 90? Sure, I believe that. But I'm sorry, there is 0% chance that like a bunch of fucking crayon eaters are like even hitting any right answers on an IQ test. During the Vietnam War, in order to increase the pool of applicants, they relaxed this last requirement. But what they found was that those below the threshold were 1.5 to 3 times as likely to fail recruit training, and they required between 3 to 9 times as much remedial training. Taken together, this added so much strain. We have, as humans, a profound ability to adapt and, and engage in pattern recognition. And what this video does, ultimately, is... Because IQ is like so colloquially understood, it makes people who even like myself who don't, uh, uh, you know, subscribe to the concept of like IQ being uh, a, a valid metric for anything. Uh, it, it makes all of us basically start cracking jokes and adopt IQ as a standard for intelligence because like it, it's just colloquially understood. You know what I mean? Like, I'm doing it already. I, I'm, I'm already making jokes about, like, how military people are low IQ, even though, even though I, I, most people in here probably don't even uh, recognize it as a serious metric for, for uh, intelligence. In ...that the military ran more efficiently without the extra recruits. In total, 5,478 people recruited under this initiative died at a fatality rate three times higher than ordinary recruits. So the military reinstated their requirements, and today, anyone with an IQ less than 80, that is about 30 million Americans, would be ineligible to join the military. Even outside the military, IQ seems to play a role in how long you live. In a Scottish study, scientists- There's a weird ass noise, I need to fucking nail it, I don't know what it is. One eternity later. It's Marat. It's always Marat. Like a zapping sound that's like bothering me. And of course, fucking coming from the garage. Scientists uncovered IQ tests from kids when they were 11 years old. Now, 65 years later, they checked to see who from the sample was still alive at age 76. And they found that on average, for every 15 point increase on the IQ test, you would be 27% more likely to still be alive at age 76. A large meta-analysis confirms that people with higher IQs have a lower risk of dying during the time frame investigated in each study. The last major thing that IQ seems to predict is income. This study shows a clear tendency for income to increase with IQ, and it found a correlation coefficient of 0.3. But the variance is huge. In fact, the top three earners in this study all had IQs below 100. A large meta-analysis of 31 studies found the correlation between IQ and income to be 0.21. That is significant, but small. It means that only 4.4% of the variance in income is explained by IQ. Maybe one of the reasons why we don't see as high a correlation for income is just because economically, intelligence is not necessarily that highly rewarded, in that maybe there are jobs, you know, like uh, just doing a real, est real estate type scheme, like maybe that doesn't require a huge amount of intelligence. Simultaneously, you have all these very highly intelligent people who maybe become college professors, but that doesn't necessarily pay very well. Yeah, a lot of people. I mean, he's not wrong. I don't think you need to be brilliant or intelligent. I think that's like a separate concept here. I don't think you need to be super smart to succeed in a capitalist society. As a matter of fact, I think being too intelligent would uh, in many instances, uh, harm your, like it would, it would harm your chances of success. Um, however, however, I still don't think IQ is a decent metric for intellect regardless. People who have very high intelligence scores don't have the same interest in, uh, in accumulating money. The relationship with net worth is even weaker. It hardly seems to correlate with IQ. 
even though people with higher IQs are supposedly more intelligent and on average they make more money each year. But this apparently doesn't translate into saving or accumulating more wealth overall. But if IQ correlates with school achievement... I just don't believe that Veritasium is going to make an IQ video, no matter how dumb I am. I just, I'm not dumb enough to believe that he will 100% uh, defend IQ. He was probably going to uh, end up shitting on it. Job performance, income, and longevity. Why don't we hear more about it? Because there's way... More because there is, there is way too much information to suggest that IQ is absolutely determined by so many different conditions other than like genetic intelligence and that IQ doesn't also uh, do a great job of showing uh, a, a uh, like it doesn't do a good job of, of being a measuring stick for intelligence to begin with. Or people tested. I think it's because IQ has a dark history. When Henry Goddard brought Binet's test to America, its use and interpretation shifted dramatically. IQ doesn't mean anything, low IQ motherfuckers. That's my favorite. There you go. You just outed yourself as a dumbass. Okay, what you, this is the same. This is like the, the, the alpha dog mentality, okay? If you value IQ that hard, you probably do not have the concepts that you ascribe to IQ, whether it be intellect or, or just like being quick-witted, sharp. You see what I'm saying? Thank you for saying I'm handsome. I, I take it back, you're very smart. In France, Benet believed intelligence could be improved through education. He designed his tests so that struggling students could be given more help to catch up. But in the US, the modified test was given to adults to rank them by intelligence. And researchers like Spearman believed that G was unchangeable, that whatever general intelligence you were born with, you would have for the rest of your life. Yeah, and that part is also... thought G was... In yeah, that part is, is absolutely wrong in general. So there's like numerous different components that you need to look at uh, with respect to like taking down the concept of IQ if you're going to criticize it. Number one is that it's not, it's 100% not genetically inherited. It quite literally has everything to do with nurture, okay? Uh, there have been studies conducted in India, for example, where they measure the IQ of uh, people in an area, people in a region uh, during famine versus when they have enough food and the IQ points drop off dramatically when they do not have access to an ample amount of food, which is such a wild thing to do when you think about it. Like, these motherfuckers are starving and they're like, here's an IQ test. Take it. Anyways, Inherited, continue. passed down from parents to children. These days we would say it has a genetic basis. There is some evidence to support these assertions. IQ appears fairly consistent over one's lifetime. So they had tests done when people were 11 years old. They found all those tests uh, in, a, in a filing cabinet and followed those people up and gave them the same test when they were 90 years old, uh, you know, much, much later. Their scores, 80 years apart, were correlated at around 0.5 to 0.6. There's also evidence for a genetic basis to IQ. You find, for instance, that if you get two identical twins and give them an IQ test, they have a very strong correlation. It's a, actually about the same as giving the same person the test, you know, a few weeks apart. Henry Goddard used the claims that intelligence was inherited and unchangeable to put IQ at the center of the American eugenics movement. Eugen Wait, what the fuck? No shot. I got a concussion in ninth grade and haven't been the same since. What the fuck is happening? This dude just, first of all, like, Shatterspell concussion wrong? Yeah, that's fine. IQ always comes with the eugenic conversation. Yeah, I know, but he went with IQ is... is, is I know the history of IQ inherently being uh, adopted and utilized by eugenicists. I know the contemporary version of this is the bell curve, okay? But it's wild to let that hang without uh going into detail about numerous studies that have been conducted on this matter that uh completely debunk this concept genesis wanted to prevent those with undesirable traits from having kids 
in many states laws were passed like the the problem with this isn't that like oh man if you have low iq you can't have children like obviously that's an issue okay obviously that's fucked up uh legislating on on those terms is fucked up but the the underlying premise that there is legitimacy to um heritability of like uh high iq and iq scores not changing is is really really bad um it's it's not true to enable forced sterilization of people who failed to meet a certain threshold on an IQ test. The constitutionality of these laws was upheld by the Supreme Court in 1927. Even words that we now use as insults, moron, idiot, imbecile, were used as scientific true, yes. terms. In his judgment, Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes wrote, it is better for all the world if instead of waiting to execute degenerate offspring for crime or to let them starve for their imbecility, society can prevent those who are manifestly unfit from continuing their kind. Three generations of imbeciles are enough. In total, over 60,000 people were forcibly sterilized as a result of these laws. In fact, they served as a model for Nazi Germany. Hitler himself claimed to be inspired by American eugenicists. These have been used for horrific things in the past. At the Nuremberg trials after the war, some Nazis quoted from the American Supreme Court decision. Uh -huh. Given this awful history, I think it's understandable that many people completely disregard IQ today. On the science of intelligence, there are a number of things those early researchers got wrong. One is that IQ is not entirely determined by genetics. Yes. Can you quantify the effects of genetics versus environment? When you look at twin studies, on average across the whole lifespan, it's about 50-50 to uh, uh, heritability and uh, environment. You simply can't, for ethical reasons, estimate it in humans you know, with a reasonable degree of certainty or accuracy. Given my reading of that literature, it's a pretty broad range, probably somewhere between 40% and 70%. Okay. Fucking told you, dumb bitches in the chat that are like, nah, you don't understand. It's like directly tied to your genes. Maybe you should have let the fucking video cook, not just me, okay? And since education it's, can- And there's also been uh, plenty of studies conducted on this uh, since the ones that he was using. I mean, for, so 40 to 70 isn't zero, though, Lamau. Keep coping. Or you were saying he didn't address it? No, I said it's ridiculous not to let him address it and leave it hanging, especially considering that uh, he's presenting it like it's a, a profound truth while talking about the only ethical considerations being, the only ethical considerations being that... Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, it? Being that like, oh, the Nazis did it too. And that's why it's bad. Or they started sterilizing people and that's why it's bad. Like, it's not just that, it's not necessarily just that they were sterilizing people that was bad. That was objectively bad. But, um, but the real issue also is that it's not even true to begin with. Can improve IQ, it is not completely fixed over a lifetime. Plus, intelligence might not be a single construct as initially imagined. These days, scientists recognize two forms of intelligence, fluid and crystallized. Fluid intelligence is your ability to learn, process information, and solve novel problems. Whereas crystallized intelligence involves the knowledge you've accumulated over your lifetime. Both types of intelligence increase throughout childhood, but fluid intelligence peaks in early adulthood and then declines, whereas crystallized intelligence He's implying that drawing that correlation is unethical, but not wrong, which is still a sus take, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't like that either, but uh, whatever. Remains more right, sticky. In early types of intelligence increase throughout childhood, but fluid intelligence peaks in early adulthood and then declines, whereas crystallized intelligence remains more stable. But IQ has been further misused to promote the idea of racial differences in intelligence. There is, for example, an observed gap between the average IQ of black and white Americans. Articles have also been published on the IQs of different nations around the world. Many of these nations... Every racist, every fucking racist loser that has to cope with their position in society literally dives so devastatingly deep into this and, and knows this by heart.
It's like the 1350 of the uh, even more racist white supremacists out there who are just like, yeah, I know I'm a pathetic loser, but guess what? Technically, uh, I have genetic traits that make me smarter than every other uh, non-white person I've ever met. That's why they, uh, due to the, due to the psychic damage that they faced when their sense of entitlement from their upbringing doesn't match their material conditions, you often find this weird heel turn uh, by, by a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of white people often um, that, that look for uh, additional reasons like, oh, it's feminism that ruined my position in society that I was supposed to have. Uh, but because look, I'm destined to be uh, a brilliant uh, scientist are purported to have average IQs below 70. That's the cutoff for intellectual disability. How could this be? The conclusion that some draw is that there are genetic differences between races or nations in intelligence. But I think that's a gross misrepresentation of the data. The problem, I'd argue, is that IQ tests don't necessarily measure what you think they're measuring. And the proof is that there's a representative exactly. sample of white Americans whose average IQ is 70. Who are these people? Just ordinary Americans who lived around 100 years ago. Researcher James Flynn studied the average results of IQ tests over the past century. And every so often, the tests get updated and renormalized to keep their average at 100. Now what Flynn noticed was that each time they got renormalized, the scores had to be shifted down a bit more, by about two or three IQ points per decade. And if they didn't do this, what we would see is that the average IQ of the whole population was increasing at a steady rate for the last hundred years, adding up to around a 30 point increase. This is known as the Flynn effect. Were our immediate ancestors on the verge of mental retardation? Because seven <laughs> Yo, my man, yo, he can say it, dude. He's a PhD, okay? He's probably, it's his word, okay? My man just said it like that? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's 2013, so it was very much, very much normal and allowed to say, let's be fucking real, okay? The entire concept of the R word, as I've talked about a lot, it's funny to hear it in a TED talk from like a fucking PhD, but um, I, I believe it was still uh, like a, I believe in 2013, it was still probably like a, a, a actual medical diagnosis, which is really interesting to consider because uh, people... People were shocked about it. You said it in 2020. Yeah, fucking dude. Yeah, I know. I, I've I've had it. I've had some slip ups. What do you mean? Oh no, fucking kill me, dude. I can't believe I said the R word. Like, suck my dick, idiot. Uh, what's funny about it is, which is I've talked about this so many fucking times, and you should know that. Uh, the R word was a substitute. Was a was a medical term, and it was a substitute for the term idiot. Because idiot was a medical term, and people, because idiot was the medical term, <coughs> and people used to get, uh, people were mad at the term idiot being used, or, or imbecile as well. Like, throughout time, man has always looked for a different way to say the R word. Okay? It's just, that's a constant. People get upset. Then you change it. You find a different word to say it. You find a different word. People catch up to that. They get mad at you using that word. Then you substitute it for a different word. And the cycle continues. It is the, it's the cycle of life. Yes. You mean neurodivergent? Oh, 100%. I do think that uh, neurodivergent is like the, the like appropriate way to say it now. And that will probably be uh, considered a big no-no in the next decade or so. And then once that is the big no-no in the next decade or so, we'll go back to saying the R word openly, just like we say idiot, and no one even fucking thinks that that's inappropriate. 
straight up. The R word will return, fear not, in the next decade. One million percent. And when it does, when it does, the euphemism treadmill, uh, when it does, the, the old words will return. 70 is normally the score for mental retardation. Mm -hmm. Or are we on the verge of all being gifted? Because 130 is the cutting line for giftedness. Now, the genetics of the population haven't really changed over 100 years. So what caused the increase? Well, there is some debate about the true causes, but one of them is probably improving childhood nutrition and health. You know, height also increased across that time period, right? People got taller and taller and taller. Another cause is better education. There's lots of evidence that school makes you more intelligent. You become better at problem solving if you have more knowledge because it's easier for you to make associations if you have more things to make the associations with. A third proposed cause is a shift in the types of work that most people do, from mostly manual labor 100 years ago to much more abstract thinking these days. That's why the idea of not using certain words because people are offended by them is inherently stupid. No, I don't think it. I don't think it's inherently stupid at all. Man is a social animal. Um, we live in uh, we live in in uh, uh, social environments, and in order for there to be some kind of cohesion, you abide by certain standards, and not offending other people is one of those standards. It's like a pretty basic thing. And uh, for that reason, I think uh, it's, it's perfectly understandable for a lot of people to be like, I don't want you saying this. As long as it reaches a certain point, a pivotal point, you just stop using certain words and find new and creative ways to say it. You know what I mean? Yeah, let's just randomly ban random words, yes. What am I doing? Am I dealing with a bunch of fucking idiots in here? What's going on? A bunch of imbeciles? What is this, 2014? What are you fucking that desperate to say certain words like you fucking loser? Are you a child? What the fuck's wrong with you? Although I completely fucking understand that uh, I completely fucking understand that that um, these words are going to come back in fashion and will no longer be considered no-no words, okay? It is so incredibly fucking dumb to get this upset over not being able to say it like you're just you're literally just upsetting people for no fucking reason good job man all right you're a big you're a big meanie okay you got it you did it let's just randomly ban random words is so fucking stupid no obviously it doesn't work that way we're not banning the word banana idiot and no one is banning a word anyway you could still be a fucking asshole but given the fact that we are social beings okay one element of that social cohesion stems from uh, being able to work alongside one another. And if enough people in a group decide, well, this is kind of fucked up, let's not say this anymore, then, you know, most normal individuals will say, all right, you know what? I want to be polite. I don't want to be a fucking asshole. I'm glad that you understand that. It's just about not being a dickhead. And working alongside one another and like demonstrating empathy. And we do it in a way. Yeah, we already do it in other ways where we don't even recognize it. Like social media is such an important, profoundly important part of our lives that like because TikTok has certain keywords that you can't say, people literally say unalived instead of die. Like it, it's already happening in silly and stupid ways. You also do it every day in work as well. Being able to say certain slurs or certain things that people have decided are no-no words, for example, does not make you like a cool, edgy guy in a leather jacket, okay? It just makes you a fucking asshole. And I know that in a lot of parts of the internet, being like the biggest fucking douchebag is seen as like a, like a marker for courage, bravery, being real, right? But in most circumstances in the real world, it doesn't mean that at all. It just shows that you're a fucking loser. You're an asshole. You're a mean guy. You're a bully. You want to be a bully? <coughs> doesn't make you alpha. It makes you weird. 
See, you're not that dumb. No, I am pretty dumb. But this is not, you don't have to be smart to, to have these opinions. All right, let's continue. And that shift may have made us better at answering the types of questions that are asked on IQ tests. Rotate again. The point is that IQ tests appear to objectively measure intelligence, but they don't. Even in the same country, separated only by time, cultural changes can affect the average scores on IQ tests. So why shouldn't we expect cultural differences between groups at the same time to have the same effect? Some tests go so far as to label themselves culture fair, meaning the questions should be equally valid for all cultures. But the truth is, it's impossible to construct such a test. Does that work? No. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, that's just a title, right? That's just a marketing term. I don't think there is such a thing as a completely culture free or culture fair uh, test. Culture fair tests assess visual relations, geometric shapes, and patterns, ignoring the fact that cultures differ in, for example, whether they have words for shapes or spatial relations. These differences influence how people think about and use categories. It's also debatable whether cultures without printed materials even perceive them in the same way that we do. What culture fair tests don't assess is ethnobotanical knowledge, or training dogs to hunt, or surviving alone in the rainforest. Arguably, these forms of intelligence are more important for survival than knowing, say, the next number in the sequence. But since they are less common in our culture and we don't have good ways of measuring them, we see IQ puzzles as the definitive way to quantify intelligence. And the people who make these tests agree. There are stringent requirements before a test validated for one population can be used with a very different population. Even in the limited forms of intelligence that IQ attempts to assess, there are factors other than G which affect the final IQ. Like motivation. How much someone is incentivized to complete the test can have a marked impact on their score. Many studies have tried oh, paying God. subjects to complete an IQ test. In some studies, they're offered a little, say around a dollar. Other studies offer between $1 and $10, and the real high rollers offer more than $10. A large meta-analysis showed that motivating people in this way increased IQ, and the larger the dollar amount, the greater the average increase. At the high end, IQ increased by up to 20 points. The effect is largest for those with below average IQs, so in addition to G, IQ tests also measure motivation. But it doesn't stop there. They do rotate. Training and I coaching for an IQ test can boost scores by up to eight points. I just completed the test in uh, some random notice, not to really talk after that. It seemed pretty fair. There were lots of different sections. The math section in particular, I feel like I killed. Those questions were easy. I would say having done the test, I feel like that should be trainable. Like you should be able to train someone to do that well. Test taking strategy is also important. Some people Yes, it absolutely is trainable. Are just better at taking tests under time pressure than others. First of all, if it wasn't trainable, then they wouldn't hide it. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, that's the, that's the whole point. That's why they're like, oh, you can't film this and you can't show the questions. Why? Because, yeah, it's fucking trainable. It's the most trainable. Every test is trainable. So they they recognize that. The test givers recognize that. It's kind of the whole point. I think the hardest thing about the test was the time limits, looking for the patterns in a series of shapes. And it just normally takes me a little while, and so I feel like I didn't finish those. You have to know when to skip questions, how to eliminate clearly wrong answers, and when to guess. Anxiety also plays a role. Apparently, a small amount of anxiety is good, but past a certain point, it negatively impacts performance. Uh, I guess the overall review I is... I have too much anxiety. I'm I think, so bad at testing. I think I did taking. okay. Uh, and I think the training actually really, really helped. That's my prediction. Let us fast forward to the future and see how I actually did. I actually got my results from the author of the IQ test I took. There are three areas. Uh, three okay. specific areas. For the math one, for the numbers ones, I think that's where, where I felt really comfortable when I you know, got there before the time was done and then I could go back and look at a few things. Yeah. Uh, you, you blew the roof off the quantitative one. On the quantitative, it was 143. 
course, on the crystallized intelligence index, uh, it was 132. The uh, fluid intelligence index uh, was 118, hmm. which still is a higher score than 88 and a half percent. Uh, if no, we, it's not, it's not bad, but that's, it's interesting that that one is, is, uh, you know, significantly Damn, lower, he's bummed. I guess. And that's not an unusual difference around that concept of G people have strengths and weaknesses. If we were to look at the best estimate of, of G for you, uh, on this set of tests, and it'd be different if you took a different test, it was at 134, which, uh, don't trust no one with that accent on IQ test. No, I kind of love that. I love his accent. It is higher than 98.8% of the population. Wow. Uh, hopefully you're not disappointed with any of that. No, you know, I, I wanted to do well. I, you know, I feel like my motivation was, was high, possibly higher than the, the average person. So what is IQ good for? My clinical practice now is forensic neuroscience, and about 90% of my cases are death penalty. One of the most common issues is what's referred to the Atkins defense after the name of the U.S. Supreme Court case that eliminated the death penalty for people with intellectual disability. Can't the criminal just throw the IQ test? Can't they just intentionally answer no. every question wrong? We know that. I mean, it, we in Okay, first of all, uh, that don't stop motherfuckers from executing low IQ uh, people with mental and intellectual disabilities, okay? Let me tell you, and that certainly doesn't stop the Supreme Court in ruling on behalf of states like Texas or Florida, which have made it an Olympic sport, okay? They fucking love that shit. So a man with that kind of accent should know that pretty well, I think. Include, just like in the test that, that you took, there are embedded... Uh, measures of invalidity it's detected using various mathematical algorithms we're better than 95 deciding if people should die depending on their iq no it's actually deciding if people shouldn't die depending on their iq as in because their iq is so low that it signals some kind of of uh mental uh disability mental deficiency um uh, that uh you know it's like a he didn't know better defense almost you know what i mean which is precisely the reason why, and there are, there are plenty of people who are like, regardless of what you think about the IQ test, and I am not exactly fond of the IQ test, as you guys might've noticed, it's not like, uh, it's not like there aren't people, uh, who, who do have legitimate, uh, mental impairments, right? I mean, I don't think that capital punishment should exist to begin with, but even in a state, uh, even in a country and a state where capital punishments do exist, it's fucking ridiculous that it, it, it the state is executing people who are literally like vegetables, pretty much. 5% accurate in detecting people who are attempting to fake poor performance. Oh, wow. One thing that we might be interested in doing is to boost people's cognitive ability early in life so that it takes them, if, even if they go into cognitive decline, uh, it takes them longer to reach the point uh, where they'll have sort of functional, actual everyday problems where they, where they lose independence, whether it comes to, you know, dealing with their money or whether it comes to dealing with. Vegetables, what a gross word to use. I mean, yeah, I don't know how else to describe it. I'm sorry. Okay. Like what, what would you say? Like what, what is the, what is the right uh, a term? I know that like, it's politically incorrect, the, the terminology that I use, but like, like, what do you want me to say? You know, I, I've been trying to dance around it, but. You know, um, you know, reading labels, whatever it is that, that, that people struggle with when they get into kind of later stages of cognitive decline. If we could discover a way to lastingly boost people's intelligence, that would be massively helpful. Maybe its best use is in identifying individuals with strong intellectual abilities who haven't otherwise been able to demonstrate them. Teachers would recommend that a kid gets put in the gifted and talented program because generally they'd, they'd observed them uh, doing well in the classroom. But if you replace that with a standardized test, an IQ test, you find a um, higher proportion of, of poorer kids and kids from, from uh, minority ethnic backgrounds in the gifted and talented program when you use an IQ test. And the reason is that you're using an objective measure. You're not just relying on some teacher's opinion. Getting into a good school was about who you knew uh, or who your parents knew or how much money your parents had. 
not so much about how you were doing. The idea that you could try to develop an objective-ish measure that would try and iron out all those social biases was clearly a, a well-meaning idea. IQ is something that uh, not only psychology, but the general public has a love-hate relationship with. You Tell know, me about that. We, psychologists hate to talk about, uh, you know, intelligence and people's intelligence test scores and that kind of stuff. And I've had parents, you know, when I've included intelligence as part of a neuropsychological evaluation of their kid, they'll say, well, yeah, yeah, I'd, li I'd like to know his IQ, but, you know, we don't really care about that. What was it? <laughs> <laughs> and then I also think you have the debate about IQ. Extremes on both sides, which I think doesn't help. Um, you have the extreme of people who say, this is the most important thing ever. People's IQ is, the, is, is a majorly important factor that we must know about them and we can classify them into particular schools or particular ways of education or whatever. That's a one extreme and I think that's totally unpredict unproductive. But there's another extreme. The other extreme is the kind of blank slate view, which is that these tests are completely useless. They don't tell us anything that they're only a, a tool of racism and uh, prejudice and, and so on. I think that's wrong as well. And there's just this massive firestorm. Yeah, I feel like they are, they are mostly useless, especially because like uh, they're useless for multiple different reasons, okay? But obviously he's not going to say that because his job is literally IQ. Like that would make his, that would render his job useless. Uh, I would be, I would definitely be a, an IQ extremist in that regard. But um, this chat doesn't like nuance. I mean, it, it's mostly, it's mo it's largely useless. It's useless from multiple different metrics. Okay. It, it's, it's useless because even if it were to actually legitimately measure intelligence, okay, not just pattern recognition, even if we nailed it, okay, we figured out, like, what it means to be intelligent, it's still infinitely uh, uh, useless to figure out anything else about the person. Not. Not very good, uh, as evidenced by uh, who succeeds in society. One, because we don't live in a meritocracy regardless, and two, even if we did live in a meritocratic society... It still doesn't matter because there's so many different qualities that we as human beings, uh, we're very complex. There's still so many different qualities that we care about when we think about success. You know what I mean? Like what it means to be successful. I also love how they're trying to both sizes when they clearly have a stake in the debate. Yeah, I mean, no matter what happens, categorizing people on that metric doesn't provide much value. Exactly. There are so many different factors that uh, are, are really important and not considered in this situation that looking at, uh, looking at pattern recognition doesn't necessarily nail anything down other than the fact that you are good at taking the IQ test. And most people will say that. You know what I mean? So just ban all standardized tests. I don't even think standardized tests are good in general, but uh, I, I don't know what better. I genuinely don't know uh, what the best possible way of, of uh, like measuring someone's capabilities, like someone's cognitive capabilities, someone's knowledge over a particular subject than standardized tests storm on both sides happening around them and the people in the middle just get just get forgotten the people who have more moderate views on these on these sort of topics so you know i'd recommend that people um look for the more moderate views on, on this i think the big mistake is thinking that iq in some way determines someone's worth what's much more important in my opinion is how you interact with and help the people around you which is why i think stephen hawking said people who brag about their iq are losers to play devil's advocate just because there are other factors doesn't mean this one couldn't be used as a part of an evaluation. No, there's a significantly more holistic approach. And um, and it's it's holistic, but it's also hard to... It's hard to compute. This is probably the worst uh, community to, to make this argument in because a lot of people are, you know, stem cells and 
and maybe a little bit A-worded and, and uh, you know, possibly think like, no, 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 this is how it's supposed to be. But um, you can't, you can't really, you can't really uh, uh, have this uh, quantitative assessment on something that is inherently qualitative. You know what I mean? That's the major problem with this kind of uh, test is that it is trying to desperately uh, put a number on something that changes throughout time, something that changes depending on your, uh, something that changes depending on your like <laughs> level of satiation. Satiety? Is that what the right word is? I don't even fucking know. I mean, I'm stupid. Whatever. But, um, can we not say autistic now? No, we can. It's a joke, man. Chill. I'm an IQ conservative, Hassan. Like all other conservative ideals, I'm not rated very highly, but I'll still defend it blindly. Ironic, because a lot of conservatives would probably... Standardized tests are efficient... And a fairly decent correlation with intelligence only for the type of individuals they designed these tests to churn out and completely loses people that aren't raising the environment for target demographics for these tests. While IQ tells us something, it doesn't tell us how our lives will turn out. We have the ability to dramatically improve our outcomes by building knowledge and analytical skills. And if you're looking for a free and easy way to do that, then you should check out this video's sponsor, Brilliant.org. With Brilliant, you can master key concepts in everything from data science and math the to ad. programming and technology. Just set your goal and Brilliant designs the perfect learning path for you. Someone also said uh, that uh, standardized tests are super informative, but I do think they should not be tied to a school's financing. No child left behind, but I don't think we should get rid of them. We should look at them more for how we can better teach students as an ed policy researcher. Yeah, I don't know if there's a better alternative to standardized testing. I, I, I'll be the first to admit that. Um, I, I just don't know. If there, is, if there is something out there that's better, I don't know. Um, I'm running the last ad break here, by the way, but... Someone in the chat was saying like, oh, um, someone in the chat was saying like, oh, well, if everybody had the same level of education, like then you could run IQ tests. Like even then it doesn't, it still doesn't arrive at a decent conclusion about anything. Do you see what I'm saying? Because like the test in and of itself is exclusively good in a vacuum. It's good. And it only shows you that you're good at taking that style of test. I have a friend who's a full-on professor on this, like got a PhD in organizational testing. There's a lot to consider. I'm not even talking about standardized testing. I'm talking about IQ tests now. <sighs> yeah, like the video itself mentioned how incentives will increase IQ scores up to, by up to 30 points. That's massive. It takes you from average intelligence to, like, super genius. Think about that. Potentially. So, I don't know. It feels crazy to, to say, like, well, this is a pretty good, this is a pretty decent metric. Jordan Peterson loves IQ, even as a list of jobs he thinks every IQ would be good for. He doesn't list any jobs for anyone under 85 IQ, lol. Yeah. You are talking about standardized testing, though, because you took the extreme position that the IQ test is useless. I mean, what does the IQ test uh, say for you if you believe that the IQ test is good and it, and it, ha it can have some uses? I don't think it's that extreme of a position to to say that, by the way. Will you take an IQ test on stream? Sure, I'll take an IQ test on stream. Like saying testosterone levels are a good indicator for masculinity or whatever. It's just too broad a concept to boil down to a single number. 